what is going on there YouTube and welcome back to another comic book video this is the channel where we sit down and cover different comic book stories from Marvel DC and even IDW as well but today we are going to jump back over to DC Comics and we're going to wrap up our coverage over Superman Birthright now we covered the first half in our last video. In this video, we are going to cover the second half of the lost origin of Superman before the New 52 happened. Honestly, y'all, this was a very interesting story that I truly did like. So, if you do like today's comic book video, please hit that like button down below and also subscribe to the channel for more content to come in the near future. Also, any suggestions on books I should read will please let me know in the comments below because you never know, your suggestion could be a future video down the road. But I do hope you enjoy today's video. So getting back into Birthright, we pick up with Clark Kent while he is working at the Daily Planet. Now this is to show us that with Clark working here, everyone kind of ignores Clark at work. Because he is so quiet and awkward, when he is Clark Kent, no one really notices he is there. Honestly, it is kind of sad because even though he is trying to keep people from figuring out that Superman is Clark Kent, he still wants to have friends around him. Sadly, everyone at work completely ignores the guy and he is just walking around lonely. It gets to the point that everyone goes to dinner, but the person who made all of the plans gave Clark the wrong address on purpose, so he will not show up. Now, Lois is the only person who stands up for Clark, and that is it. Except, after that, you have Clark Kent hear a bomb go off on the bridge, meaning that he has to jump in to save the people on the bridge. So, we see him change into his Superman outfit to begin the process of saving everyone on the bridge. Except, while he was doing that, we learned that it was Lex Luthor who blew up the bridge and he has a good reason why. Because at first it looks like Superman is here to save the day but causing more explosions on the bridge makes it seem like that Superman is the one destroying the bridge. Beginning the process of putting fear into people and changing their opinions about Superman. And Superman is trying to show them that he is not destroying the bridge, but trying to save the bridge. Now Lex Luthor has one more plan up his sleeve, which is the fact that he uses the pieces of kryptonite that he had and put it near where Superman is at. Just by placing it in the right area to use against him. Now this is Lex Luthor trying to piece everything together with Superman and the kryptonite. Where of course it does affect Superman, making him weak and unable to finish the job to save the bridge. It's Lex Luthor continuing with the idea that Superman is evil and not here to help save Metropolis from its own fate. This section closes with him falling into the river and giving Lex Luthor the victory. But then we pick up the next day where we see Clark Kent has returned home to Smallville to see his parents but to also learn more about Lex because remember we were told that Lex Luthor and Clark were close friends when they were younger. And something happened where Lex does not remember Smallville or pretends not to. And you have Jonathan Kent tell us that everyone in town that he asked about Lex is also pretending that Lex Luthor was never here. It's again Lex Luthor covering up the fact that he was ever in Smallville. Except this leads to us finally learning what happened between Lex and Clark when they were younger. Now the story jumps back in time to the point where Lex and Clark are both teenagers and Clark is bringing Lex home for dinner. Now this is supposed to show us that Lex did not have any social skills and we learn this by the way he interacts with Clark and Martha. This is pointing to the idea that Lex has been sheltered 
sheltered for his whole life and only focus on his studies. We see him cause a stir with Jonathan Kent and the machines for the farm as well, thinking that he was helping but making things worse. When Lex sees that he is causing more problems than actually helping, he begins to run away because again, he does not know how to interact with people at all. And you have Clark help calm him down to help him realize that everything is okay. This leads to the moment where you have Clark and Lex chilling on the roof. And this is honestly an amazing moment to see here because you have the two of them talking like they are growing a bond with one another. For Clark, he has someone who is kind of like him. Somebody who is alone in the world because of being different. Clark knows that he is not human. And for Lex, he is so smart but no social skills. And people treat Lex for being a tad bit different. It is two people coming together who are completely different from one another and building some form of bond with one another. But this leads to the present day where we see Lex Luthor working in his lab, where we see him working on some kind of project that involves another piece of kryptonite. This time, it is him trying to use this piece of kryptonite as a way for him to access the history of Krypton which we do see him achieve. Now, once he does that, we see him being able to translate what is being said to him. He is firsthand learning the history of Krypton before Superman is being able to learn about it. Now, he does mention that this is not his first time trying something like this, but also this builds on the concept of Lex when he was younger, and you are going to see what I mean here in a moment. We see that back in the past, Lex actually tried to fit in with the people of Smallville, but unfortunately he could not, mainly because the city of Smallville knew that Lex comes from money. With that being said, every time Lex would do something that was out of the norm, People would hate on him even more because he was not normal to them. And how can someone who was not normal have so much money as well? The only person he had in his corner was Clark. And even then, with Clark being there, people started to think that Clark was strange as well. But again, after that, we see Clark visiting Lex at his mansion on the cliff where we see that Lex was able to make a device to help detect if someone is actually an alien. The device gets turned on and is pointed at a young Clark Kent, where you would think that Lex would put it together that Clark is actually an alien and not from Earth, except Lex assumes that his new device is broken and it upsets him so much that he cries and starts breaking things around him. You have Lex go inside his house to hide from Clark and cry about his failure because he does not know how to deal with failing. Now the next time Clark sees Lex, it has been a couple weeks. We learned that Lex had locked himself up in his lab working on a new project. This is where we make the connection to the present day project to this one. When Clark walks into the room, you have Lex talk about his life goal is to prove that there is life on other planets out there. The main reason why is because he has a piece of kryptonite. The same one we saw him use in our last video and use on Superman. Except when he shows Clark, instantly Clark begins not to feel good and falls to his knees. To Lex, it seems that Clark is making fun of him like everyone else has and Lex throws Clark out of his lap. Now Clark knows that Lex machine could cause a huge explosion or even something worse than that. And so you have Clark trying to get back inside to stop Lex, but Lex locks the door and Lex continues to see if he is able to connect to the past of Krypton by using the kryptonite as a way to connect to them.
But as soon as he is able to make some kind of connection, his computer goes off saying overload. And of course, the machine blows up the lab and the mansion as well. When Clark wakes up, he comes to find out that Lex did survive, but Lex's family was killed in the blast. To Clark, he was hoping that piece of kryptonite had got buried in the blast. You have Jonathan bring up a good point about Lex, that Lex's ego is so big that he will be unable to make a connection that Superman and Clark are the same person. But this leads into the next day, where we see Clark is back in Metropolis, but he sees everyone is freaking out. The big question is now, why is everyone freaking out for? where he sees a report of Earth is going to be attacked and the spaceship has his Superman logo on the front of it. With that, you have everyone trying to figure out if this is true or is this fake because this photo came from Lex stating that Superman was here as a sentry for the people of Krypton to help them invade Earth. With that, People are starting to judge Superman even more, but you have Lois Lane going around asking people who were at different crime scenes where Superman had been at to get people's opinions on Superman. Is he good or is he evil? Now we see Lois Lane get captured by the Giacomo family because she was using them as a way to learn more about Superman. She is hoping that Superman would save her before she is killed by them. Which, of course, Superman does come in at the very last second to save her. But the reason why she pulled this move is to actually get the chance to interview him. And so you have Superman beat up all of these guys, but then he proceeds to mess with these bad guys' boss as well. This leads to a brief moment where Lois Lane talks to Superman about whether it is true or not that there is an alien invasion coming to Earth, where he tells her, no, and they both know that Lex is lying about this as a way to build up his popularity and trust with the people. And so the big question is how to prove that he is lying. But the next day we see Clark Kent messaging Martha Kent about these photos that Lex keeps sharing to the world because now almost every world government is asking if they are true and what they should do with Superman. Martha Kent points out that all of his photos of the spaceship, people, and anything else about Krypton does fit the same designs they see in the Clark Kent tablet. The same tablet we saw in our previous video that was given to him by his biological parents. That is when Clark Kent realized that he has to talk to Lex to figure out where in the world is he getting this information from. And so you have Superman go see Lex at the Echo Park. Now in our last video, Echo Park was actually a facility that Lex made to see if they can find other forms of life in the universe. Except now, he has turned it into a base where he is building a bunch of weapons to help the American army fight off this invasion. Where of course, by the time he's making a deal, Superman comes in and smashes the place to have a conversation with Lex Luthor to figure out why in the world did Lex just lie to the whole world about this invasion coming to Earth. Now this leads to the big moment for Lex Luthor over Superman, which is when Superman asks Lex Luthor what in the world is Project Krypton all about. That is when Lex realizes that Superman has no idea about Krypton, that basically Superman crashed here on Earth and had no idea where he came from. And so you have Lex Luthor show Superman images of Krypton. Now using the kryptonite that he has, he is able to pull images from the past through space time to learn more about Krypton and he shows Superman everything he knows so far. Now Superman can't believe what Lex is showing, but Lex is showing true images of the past of Krypton. 
where we see Lex continue to explain that Kryptonite is from Superman's home world. But to point out that when Krypton exploded, the explosion radiated different pieces of Krypton and basically led it to become Kryptonite and made a weakness for Superman. Also gave Lex Luthor the chance to learn more about Krypton. Now Superman knows that Lex would not share this information with different governments to make money. It is more of Lex trying to please his ego but also to show that he has completed his life goal which is to find other forms of life in space. And this section closes with Superman leaving after what he found out. Then the next day, we see that while Clark Kent is out in the city enjoying his day, that is when everyone begins to freak out. Because out of nowhere, there is this armor monster that appears in the middle of the city. And so you have Superman change clothes and go in to fight against this monster, where he finds out it is mechanical, except while he is fighting against this robot, the police starts to shoot at him because at this point, Lex Luthor's plan is working. People are actually scared of Superman. And the question is, what is going to happen now that people are going to turn against Superman and actually believe that Superman is evil? But we also learned that Jimmy Olsen was there at the scene with Superman. And with him being there, you have him call up Lois Lane so she can write about what is happening in Metropolis. Except this is where we learn that there are different kinds of invasions happening all over the world. For example, there are men who are supposed to be wearing Kryptonian armor attacking the city. Now, this is only the beginning of Lex Luthor's plan because we see that he has something else under his sleeve, which is the fact that somehow he was able to broadcast a signal that gives out kryptonite radiation. And so that quickly makes Superman weak and he crashes back to the ground of Metropolis, where of course the police at this point think that Superman is evil and then begin the process to hunt down Superman where he has to run away before he is captured or killed by the police. This is all coming from the effect of Lex Luthor making it seem that Superman is evil. Now, Clark Kent is able to get away. Where we see Superman had changed back into Clark Kent again. But with him being Clark Kent, it gives him the ability to walk around Metropolis and see the damage that is coming from this attack of Lex Luthor. Monster robots and men in Kryptonian armor to make it seem that this is the army of Krypton coming from Krypton to take over Earth. It is him making the world hate Superman even more. And this is pushing Superman into a corner where it seems that he may have to give up. You have Clark return back to the Daily Planet and he sees everyone going crazy and trying to figure out what in the world is going on. But this section is to show us Clark Kent kind of down on his luck right now. He does not feel up to fighting anymore. Will you have Clark bosses yell at him to get to work? It's Perry White and Perry White's boss. But it does get to the point where you have Clark Kent write out a note telling Perry White that he is quitting. When he is about to walk out, he is confronted by Lois Lane, who kind of tries to inspire him not to quit and keeps trying to be a great reporter. At first, it seems like she failed. But really, it is going to be the starting point that inspires Clark to continue to be Superman. Now, we pick up with this guy, Nan Vanguard, who is again a human pretending to be a Kryptonian in Kryptonian armor, where we see him basically stating that him and his fellow soldiers are here to take over the world, that sooner or later, the human race is going to be wiped out. 
But of course, you have Vanguard take it to the next level with him burning the Superman symbol in the ground as a way to state that they are with Superman and he is part of the plan. This truly inspires Superman to get back into the fight, seeing people trying to frame him using images and props to say that Kryptonians are evil. So we see him change back into his Superman outfit and go after Vanguard and any other person who is part of Lex Luthor's plan. Now this is amazing to see except that the broadcast Lex Luthor has over the city that is giving out kryptonite radiation is slowly hurting Superman and so even though he is taking out the bad guys left and right he is slowly being drained of energy and when he takes out a certain amount of people he collapses. Now with him coming back and fighting again, it is going to help him down the road. When he collapses, he does it right in front of Lois Lane. But this is the moment where we see the Lois and Clark bonding beginning to grow. The reason why I say that is because she knows that all of this is more of Lex doing. That there are no real Kryptonians around. That these are all props made by Lex. And so you have Superman tell her that there is some kind of broadcast that is giving out kryptonite radiation that is slowly draining him. The broadcast is coming from Lex Tower. And so the plan is for Lois Lane to sneak into the tower to get rid of the broadcast to give Superman back his strength. And so he can keep fighting on. But you have Superman jump back into the fight and he tries his best to fight against the fake army of Krypton. Except that broadcast is still going on and it's slowly draining the energy of Superman. And so he is able to save a few more people but still he is still having a hard time fighting. But with him still fighting, more and more people are starting to believe that Superman is actually good. This is destroying Lex Luthor's plan completely because his goal was to make the world hate Superman, scared of Superman, and then come in to save the day and make it seem that he is the hero the world truly needs. But with his plan falling apart, you have Lex Luthor tell the American army to wait just a little bit longer. But sooner or later, the army is going to go in and pretend to stop this fake invasion and the day is saved. Now getting back to Superman, we see him still trying to protect people, but of course his energy is being drained. Where of course you have Vanguard walk up on Superman and begin to beat down on him. Where it seems that Superman could be killed off right here at this very moment. But we get this amazing moment for Superman, which is the fact that Superman have been saving people for the last couple hours. So now the people are on Superman's side and it is their turn to protect him from Vanguard. And they do actually, they actually try to stop Vanguard from killing Superman. Now remember that Clark and Lois had this big plan to stop Lex from doing what he is doing, which was Lois Lane sneaking into Lex Tower and beginning the process to remove the kryptonite. When she does that, bam, Superman powers begin to come back to him and we see him start taking down people left and right. Also, we learn that Lex Luthor kryptonite broadcasts also made it seem that there were thousands of soldiers and robots all over the place when really there were only a couple hundred and so with that gone superman began the process of taking down all of them this is the moment where you have lex luther bring up the fact that he has another plan under his sleeve that using the wormhole that let him communicate with the past of Krypton to learn more about it, Lex Luthor had a second plan where his wormhole is a two-way street, meaning that he can retrieve items from the past on Krypton to the present day on Earth. Also, the men who are fighting for him, pretending to be Kryptonians, have bombs in them as well. 
so they can blow and destroy Metropolis completely. Finally, after saying all of his plans, he throws Lois Lane out the window. Now, of course, Superman is able to stop all the bombs from blowing up and destroying all of Metropolis. It was really a small task for him. And of course, he was able to save Lois Lane as well at the very last second. This was done to lead us to the final moment for Superman to fight against Lex Luthor. You have Superman go and confront Lex Luthor. But before he does that, you have Superman tell us something that points out the character of Lex. Because Lex's parents kept him locked up at an early age, because they found out how smart he was, they forced him to focus on his books, except it led to him not having any social skills. And the one thing he wanted was a friend, but someone on his level. But we see him trying to make connections with the past of Krypton. But this leads to Superman learning something very important about himself. Because there is an image of his biological parents appearing on the screen. And they said that he was the last son of Krypton. Letting him know that he is the sole survivor of Krypton. But while these images are being played out, you have Superman and Lex Luthor fighting against each other. The fight is pretty fair because these images that are being played and the way Lex Luthor was communicating with the past of Krypton, he was using Kryptonite. And so of course right now it is weakening Superman. But Lex Luthor is not a fighter. But Clark Kent is. And so Clark Kent was able to knock out Lex. But before the machine dies off, you had Jor-El ask his wife, did they do everything they can to give their son the chance to live? And you have Superman answer the question saying they were able to accomplish their goals because Lex device was able to communicate through a wormhole to talk to people in the past on Krypton. But the fight does end there. Now I want to skip to the happy moment because I actually want to jump to the closing pages because it does confirm that Jor-El and Lara did hear their son Clark tell them that he did make it. Thanks to Lex Machine giving the ability to communicate to the past of Krypton, Clark was able to tell his parents he made it and they heard him. And that is how the book closes. Now, the moment we did skip is really just Lois Lane, Clark Kent, and everyone else at the Daily Globe celebrating the fact that the day was saved. And they all have these stories to share to the world. But also, Clark Kent is not going to quit. Finally, Lois Lane admits in her own way that she had a crush on Superman. But yeah, that is it for Birthright. Now, this is part of the video where I sit down and give my thoughts on about the book. Now, to be honest, to be honest, I love this book a lot. I will admit this, though. It is very, very heavily dialogued in this book. There's so much talking in this book, but the book did bring out a lot of different factors of human nature that goes on in our world. And I like the book for that part right there. But also, it truthfully grounded Superman. In its own way, it really did grounded Superman. And truthfully, I felt like this book right here could have been the blueprint for the Man of Steel movie. It could have been, but it wasn't. Again, though, that's my own personal opinion. Now, the artwork, though. The artwork did bother me. Truthfully, there were a lot of moments in the book where the artwork made it hard for me to read the book because the characters seemed so weird looking. Their bodies didn't seem normal. Their faces did not seem normal. And I hate to say that because this is the same artist who was on Ultimate Avengers 1 and 2. And we covered those books. And I liked those books. And the artwork in those books 
were honestly way better than it was in this one. But still, it was an amazing book. I like Birthright. It is a book I do recommend you guys go pick up at your nearby comic book store or online. But anyways, y'all, this is where I am going to end today's comic book video. So please leave me a like down below and also subscribe to the channel for more content to come in the near future. Also, any suggestions on books I should read? Well, please let me know in the comments below because you never know. Your suggestion could be a future video down the road. But I'm out, guys. See y'all later.